Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. Uh, this is your Sunday School Lesson Edition and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. Um, our Sunday School Lesson for this morning comes from the book of Amos. The book of Amos, um, we're going to look at Amos Calling um, and, and I was just telling um, those on the conference call that you know Amos is not a book that we visit that often uh, in in preaching and teaching um, is he's one of the minor prophets um, his book can be found between uh, Joel and uh, Obadiah so uh, grab your Bibles and uh, we'll be be going there um, before I get started this morning I, I, I have to uh, state that Ask, if you will, and then thank others who know already. Our family um, uh, has have been through much tragedy uh, these last um, two weeks here. Um, I had a nephew who passed, um, then a uh, cousin who passed, and then a sister who passed. And uh, I was also told this morning that um, my mom uh, had a member of her church to pass. So we, we are heavy hearted. Uh, we had one funeral on this past Friday. We have, um, uh, that was my nephew. We have my uh, sister's funeral on this coming Wednesday. And then my um, cousin's funeral on uh, Friday, this coming Friday. So please just continue to lift our family up in prayer. Um, during this time, um, it is a time of grieving, uh, it's a time of mourning, but at the same time, all three of these people uh, in the family and then even the, my mom's church member, all of them are saved. And being that they are saved, they, they knew the Lord as their personal Savior and Lord, um, we thank God that they are absent from the body, but present with the Lord. They, they're with the Lord, they're dealing with no more pain, no more anguish, no more crying, and no more tears. And uh, it is a wonderful blessing to know that, that people have put their trust in God. And as they put their trust in God, uh, God is true to his promises. He does not lie. And they are up in heaven right now with God, walking the streets of gold, uh, basking in the Shekinah glory of the Lord. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask you to overtake us this morning, dear Lord. Overtake us and just have your way with us. Uh, Lord, as I stated, we know that we are going through a grieving period, but Lord, we also rejoice in you because uh, you are our strength. The, you are our joy. And we know what your word has promised us, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And Lord, we're looking for joy to come in the morning because your presence has always been there with us to give us peace. Peace, dear Lord, peace in the midst of a storm, peace that passes all understanding, peace that guards our heart and mind. So Lord, we thank you right now for your peace because your peace is not just a word your peace is a person the prince of peace jesus christ who 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 bridged the gap dear lord between uh sinful man and a holy god the cross is the symbol of peace the cross is the symbol of peace that gets us over the gap of this life the gap of this hell that that the world is dealing with when they don't know you as their Lord and Savior. So, Lord, we thank you right now. And now, Lord, as we get ready to study your word in Sunday school, Lord, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer who lives. Bless us, Lord, as we will not just be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. Touch right now to Heavenly Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over this whole 
a conference call, Facebook Live, all this technology, Lord. We just ask you to just bless it right now in the name of Jesus. Bless those that are going to be listening to this recording later that somebody might be saved, that somebody might be encouraged as well as those who are along the line. We thank you, Lord. We praise you because we know that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us through Christ Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being a keeping God. Thank you, Lord, for being a God that's able to do when we can't even do for ourselves. We thank you and we praise you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, the blood of the Lamb, my precious Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. The book of Amos, the book of Amos this morning, the book of Amos this morning is is, is where the word is coming from. And, and Amos is one of the minor prophets. Amos is one of the minor prophets. Um, uh, his name, his name means burden or burden bearer. And uh, uh, he, 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 he is one that had a burden. God gave him a burden to, to become a prophet, to become a prophet. And so we're going to read from the seventh chapter, the seventh chapter of Amos, starting at verse 10, going all the way down to verse 17, starting at verse 10. And I'm reading out of a New King James Version of the Bible. Uh, Amos chapter 7, starting at verse 10. And it reads, Then um, Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive from their own land. Then Amaziah uh, said to Amos, Go, you seer, flee to the land of Judah. There eat bread, and there prophesy. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the royal residence. Then Amos answered and said unto Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy again if against Israel and do not sprout against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall be a harlot in the city. Your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land will be divided by uh, survey lines and you shall die in a defiled or polluted land. And Israel shall surely be led away captive from his own land. Amen. I've read for you Amos chapter uh, 7 verses 10 through 17. Our key verse comes from verses 14 and 15. And, and the key verse again, Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep uh, breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said to me, go, prophesy to my people, Israel. Today, we're going to talk about the call. We're going to talk about the call of Amos. 
Amos was called. He was a son. He was not, it says in this key verse, a son of a prophet. He, he, he was a shepherd, a sheep breeder. And he was a tender of the sycamore tree. He was one who took care of his, his trees and took care of his sheep. But God took him, took him and told him to go and prophesy. Uh, this, 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 this lesson, this lesson uh, 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 um, deals with a, 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 a man who has a profession. Uh, uh, a, he, he, he's professing uh, that, that God has called him. And, and, and we're going to contrast the difference between professing and being a professional. A young man went to seminary. He was very talented. He he had all the tools to be a great preacher, great teacher, and and uh, he went to seminary and he 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 honed his skill in school and, and 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 then he started doing his research, getting ready to 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 go into his profession as a professor, a uh, professional minister and pastor. And, and he, he, he searched all the denominations and he, he saw which one would have the highest salary. And, and, and he didn't worry about their doctrine. He didn't worry about his own belief. He said, whatever they believe in, I'll just tailor my message towards them. He wanted to serve in full-time ministry. As a professional. And oftentimes we have so many people who we, we, we used to say this when we were when we were old. Uh, 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 how man, I can't even get it. Many are called, but only few are sent. <laughs> I think I'm saying that right. Uh, uh, pe people, people feel that they've been called into the ministry, but God hadn't sent them into the ministry and they go in as a professional but but today we're going to look at a man uh, a prophet named Amos that he wasn't in it for the money he wasn't in it for the prestige of the fame or the fortune but he was in it because God had called him to be a prophet to profess his word and I thank God for that because I'm, I'm one of those people that that uh, I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran as hard as I could from accepting the call into the ministry. And then even after I accepted the call into the ministry, I wiggled and tried to wiggle my way around it and wiggle my way out of it. And, and, and But God still had a word that, that he had placed in my heart and the people that he wanted me to tell, repent. And turn from your wicked ways and accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And, and I've been preaching that for over 20 some years now. And, and, and that's what we have to realize. We have to not have to proclaim God's word, even if we have to proclaim judgment on people. Even if we have to proclaim a word that they don't like. Even when we have to proclaim a word and we don't get any money for it, any way of sustaining our livelihood from preaching God's word. Because preaching God's word does not require us to get money. But now don't, don't get me wrong. There are those who, who, who are in full-time ministry who, who God has called and God provides. He equips those that he calls. I, I, I know I'm trying probably to teach him, doing more preaching right now than teaching, but, but, I, but I wanted to just lift that up this morning because cause so oftentimes uh, uh, um, we, we, we who are preachers get caught up in, in trying to... Uh, 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 have a profession, uh, 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 a professional life as a minister, whereas that's not what is important. What is important that we proclaim Jesus Christ and his love. Hallelujah. And so this, 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 
this Amos, this Amos, as I said, he his name means burden bearer. And he was from this town called Tekoa, a small village about 10 miles south of Jerusalem. And, and he was the only... A, a, a prophet that we know of that 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 told us that that his occupation before he began declaring the, the divine commission that God had for him. He was not a priest. He was not a noble descent, but he was just a sheep bearer, a shepherd, and a tender of the sycamore tree. His contemporaries were were people like Jonah and Hosea and Isaiah, and and, and they preached. And those in his contemporaries, they preached. And the kingdom of Israel, the monarchy of Israel, uh, was split into a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. Judah, Judah, uh, 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 um, see, I think I'm, I always get it mixed up. Judah was to the south and, 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 and Israel was to the north. And the king of Israel during this time was uh, King Uzziah. The one that 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 that, that uh, uh, Isaiah was prophesying to during his time, and then uh, King Isaiah died, and he got his calling into being a sure enough prophet. The king of Judah was Jeroboam the second. Jeroboam the first was the one who was the original king uh, that helped split the kingdom in the two. But now Jeroboam the second is now king, and he was the son of Joaz. And, and when Jeroboam the first, first set up the kingdom of Israel, uh, when he split from Judah, uh, he, 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 he took the town of Bethel. And the town of Bethel, he, he set up, he set up uh, idol worshipers and calves and golden calves and made that the center of, of, of the kingdom of Israel. And so 200 years didn't pass since Jeroboam the first, and now Jeroboam the second is there, and they are still worshiping idol gods. The people of Israel, the people of Israel, they had a problem. They were worshiping idol gods, and they were just just some some unjust people. And, and God is a God of justice. He's a God of fairness. He's a God of favor. And he wants his people to be treated right. And he wants them to not worship any other God but him. And they refuse to. When we go and look at the history of the, in Chronicles, and the history of the, in Kings, First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles, we see where they talk about kings being good and kings being bad. And, and, and Jeroboam and all the kings of Israel were never, ever considered good in the sight of God. They were always considered evil in the sight of God. And so, here it is. This prophet, this sheep bearer, this tree tender, God called him to come out of his occupation and to go and preach what thus says the Lord. Now understand, during this time, now the Assyrians, the Assyrians, that's they they the the and we, we also know them by the Ninevites. They, they had already received the word from Jonah and they repented and turned from their wicked ways. So Israel and Judah were going through a time of peace. And even in a time of peace, they did not follow after God. Oh, have mercy. And so now, as we look at this lesson, our key concept is God called Amos from being a shepherd to being a prophet. I like to give my keys for kids. Number one, God called Amos to speak to the people for him. Number two, Amos told the people God's message. And number three, the people did not want to hear Amos and the message. That's, that, that's how simple this lesson is. That's our keys for kids. 
and our, our, to, our lesson aims for, for, the, for, the, for the folks who like to go deep into the word. We're going to summarize the lesson facts, the learning facts of the day. We're going to summarize the nature of the resistance to Amos' message and his response to that resistance. The biblical principle that, that we want to gain out of this lesson is to demonstrate obedience and, and commitment to God's calling even in the face of resistance. And our daily application, what we want to take away from this lesson personally is to go wherever and whenever God directs us. Oh, my, my, I have to, I always have to, I like to quote my mom's favorite passage of scripture because it's also my favorite passage of scripture. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. We got to go wherever he tells us to go. We got to go whenever he tells us to go. We got to go and do whatever he tells us to do. Oh, hallelujah. Our lesson is broken down into two parts today. Uh, uh, as the outline, we're going to look at the professional priest. That's, that's Amosea. And that's going to be verses 10 through 13. And then we're going to look at the professing prophet. The professing prophet. That's Amos. And that's verses 14 through 17. So now let's, let's, look, at, let's look at verses 10 through 13 again. Here it goes. Um, uh, this time I'm, I want to read it out of a New Living Translation. Then Amosiah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is hatching a plot against you right here on your own doorstep. What is he saying? What he is saying is intolerable. He is saying Jeroboam will soon be killed and the people of Israel will be sent away into exile. Then Amaziah sent orders to Amos. Get out of here, you prophet. Go on back to the land of Judah and earn your living by prophesying there. Don't bother us with your prophecy here in Bethel. This is the king's sanctuary and the national place of worship. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. The first thing that this professing, a professional priest do, Amosiah, is he goes to the king and tell a lie. Oh, have mercy. He told a lie. He says, Amos is hatching a plot against you right here at your very doorstep where he is saying, what, what he is saying is intolerable. See, Amos had, had spoke a word, but, 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 but just like the devil, Amosiah uh, twisted the words to, to, to fit his own likeness. You know, that, that's how the devil does. He, he, he's not the he, he he's he's the father of lies and, and everybody who follows him are nothing but liars. And they will take God's word and twist it into a lie just so they could get their way. Amaziah was a paid priest. King Jeroboam hired him. And as long as King Jeroboam was, was in power and in place, Amaziah, he would have some power. He would have some money. He would have some position. And he was going to do everything in his power to keep his position. Oh, mercy. I, I'm one of those preachers. I, I God, God allowed me to pass the churches. In, in my earlier days, traditional churches and and I I, I have a, a a a word in me to preach the unadulterated word of God. I'm not trying to please people. I'm pleasing God. 
uh, I, I'd rather obey God than man. And so I've been put out of churches for preaching the word of God because people don't want to hear what thus says the Lord. They want you to make them feel good. They don't want you to step on their feet. You got a lot of people out there that just, just want you to give them cake and ice cream. They don't want no meat and they don't want no gravy. They just want to get saved and then leave me alone. Let me do what I do like I'm at Burger King, having it my way until God takes me on to heaven. And I'm saying something to somebody. There are many people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They confessed it. They declared it. They, 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 and they, they pray. But they don't want you to tell them what thus says the Lord. That, 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 you know, it's like, like in Moses' time, the, the people told him, say, say we, we, we don't want to hear from God. We just want to hear from you. You let God talk to you. But we who are called according to his purpose, we know that his word is a lamp unto our feet. His word is a light unto our path. Even if his word is a word of judgment, a word of correction, because the word has the ability to do that. It is good for doctrine. It is good for correction. It is good. And the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And it cuts down into the marrow. And his word will endure forever. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And so, Amaziah was trying to keep his position. And he went and he told Jeroboam, Jeroboam, this prophet said to you, about you that you will soon be killed and the people of Israel will be sent away into exile. But when we get to verse 12, it is evident that the king cared less about what the man of God was saying. He cared less about the lie that 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 Amaziah had, had conjured up. He didn't care. And, and, and that's and that's 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 so prevalent today how wicked leaders don't even care. They don't care. Oh, have mercy. God tells us to pray for our leaders. And we have to pray, especially those who, no matter who you are, whatever country you live in, pray for your leaders, that they be led and guided by God and that they care and have compassion on the people of God. Because we are the people who make a difference. It's not about money. It's not about power and position, but it's about knowing Jesus Christ because that's what's going to last forever. And so being an Amaziah could not get uh, the king's attention. He took matters in his own hands and he sent orders to Amos. It says in verse 12, get out of here, you prophet. Go on back to the land of Judah and earn your living by prophesying there. That says a lot about the mindset of Amaziah. Oftentimes, when people come up against us, we have to listen to what they're saying because what they say, they are showing us who they really are. They're showing us what they really care about. And Amaziah, all he cared about was money, making a living, making an earning. And he thought that that's what this prophet was all about. In, in, in the King James Version, they call him a seer. And that word seer 
in the Old Testament was a word given to the prophets because they, they, they believed that they saw visions and, uh, from God and, and God gave them insight into what was going on, what had already happened and what would possibly happen in the future. And a prophet's job is, is to be sent by God to give a message to his people. To tell them something that will happen in the future. And as one of God's prophets, I love to tell people this. If you give your life to Jesus. You confess him as your Lord and Savior. You will be saved and receive eternal life. That's the good news. That's the good news. But I have to also tell them the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's God's word. And if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, you're going to have to pay the wages of sin. And all of us have sinned. But thanks be to God that Jesus Christ demonstrated his love toward us and while we were yet sinners Christ died for the ungodly. Oh hallelujah. But Amaziah he told him to go back to your hometown and go make your money there. Verse 13, don't bother us with your prophecy here in Bethel. This is our king's sanctuary and the national place of worship. In other words, don't come into our territory with that mess. You're trespassing. When I go into the jails, I personally know that I, I'm trespassing into the devil's territory. And there are many men in there who who don't want me to even be in the place. I'm talking about the inmates. And, and, and not, not only is that some of the inmates don't want you in there, some of the guards don't even want you in there because you're messing with their profit. They need people in the jail. My job is to go in and preach the good news of Jesus Christ that, that they might be set free out of that jail. So it don't matter to me. I preach to the guards. I preach to the to, 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 the, to the inmates, I preach to everybody that I come in contact with, if not by word, but by deed. Somewhere or another, they're going to see this little light shines. I'm going to let it shine. No matter where I go, I'm going to let it shine. Because I believe that if God can take somebody like me and pick me up and turn me around and place my feet on solid ground, he can do it for anybody. Oh, hallelujah. But they don't want you in their territory. That's why when you walk into some churches, if you got any spirit of discernment, you'll discern some things and you'll see that it's rampant throughout that church. And you'll be like, wow, God, what is this going on? God said, yeah, I know. These still my people. But I need somebody to proclaim the word. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I, and pray, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them and heal their land. Old people, we still got to preach God's word. We still got to tell the undulterated truth of God. People need to repent. We all need to repent. We all need to confess. And those of us who are children of God, he made a promise to us in 1 John 1, 9 that he's faithful and just to forgive us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for his forgiveness. Thank God for, for 
the Holy Spirit in us, giving us the ability to confess. And even when we don't know what to pray for, he knows, the Holy Spirit knows how to pray with moans and groans and, 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 and he's interceding on our behalf and Jesus is interceding for us. Oh, hallelujah. Don't be a professional priest. Don't, don't get caught up in the benefits of your calling like Amaziah. But go and be a professing prophet. One that hears from the Lord and one that gives what thus says the Lord. Let's go into our next part, that professing prophet, verses 14 through 17. But Amos replied, I'm not a professional prophet. I was never trained to be one. I'm just a shepherd, and I take care of sycamore trees. Amos, he came right out. He said, I ain't no professional prophet. I, I ain't trained to do all of this. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. We don't have to be a professional prophet. We don't have to be trained in all of this stuff. All we need is a relationship with God. And hear what thus says the Lord and say it just like God said it to us. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I'm, I'm just a shepherd. And I take care of the sycamore trees. But verse 15, he says, but God, but the Lord, he called me away from my flocks and told me, go and prophesy to the people of Israel. He said, I didn't want to do any of this. I, I had my livelihood. But God, Oh, but God, oh, but God, but God called me away from my flocks and told me, go and prophesy to my people in Israel. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He did what God told him to do. Oh, if we just do what God tells us to do. If we just go where God tells us to go. If we just go and do what we are responsible for doing, God will continue to just bless us over and over again. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. And so, he says... Now in verse 16. Now then, listen to the message from the Lord. You say, he's talking to, to Amaziah, don't prophesy against Israel. Stop preaching against my people. I love that. He repeated, he repeated to, 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 to Amaziah just what he had said to him. Just so Amaziah would understand. I understood every word you said. I heard what you just told me to do. Don't prophesy against Israel. Stop preaching against my people. That's what you told me to do. I heard what you said. But verse 17 says, but this is what the Lord says. We got to do what God says and not what man says. We got to listen to man when he says stuff. We, we got to appreciate the fact that he has an opinion. And, and we ain't got to argue with him or fight with him or anything like that. But we have to say what thus says the Lord. And unfortunately, what God had to say to Amaziah and the children of Israel was not a good saying. Listen to what he says in verse 17. But this is what the Lord said. Your wife will become a prostitute in the city. And your sons and daughters will be killed. Your land will be divided up. And you yourself will die 
in a foreign land. And the people of Israel will certainly become captive in Israel from for their far from their home land. Oh mercy. This prophecy was Amaziah's punishment for lying. Lying on the prophet. Oh hallelujah. We got to keep our mouth out for people. Scripture says no weapon formed against us will prosper. Doesn't say the weapons won't be formed. But it also says every word that has been said against us, those who say it will be put to shame. And Mosea, if he would have just told the king from the beginning, he said, the prophet said that the kingdom of Israel will be taken down by the sword and the people will be exiled to a foreign land. That, that's what he originally said. He didn't say the king was going to get killed because Jeroboam didn't get killed by the sword. His son did, but not Jeroboam. But the people of Israel were captured by the Assyrians and taken into captivity. And many of them died. And many of them were cut. I, I don't know if, if all this that was prophesied actually was recorded anywhere in the Bible. But I know when God says something like, your wife shall be a harlot or a prostitute and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. I'm quite sure it happened because God is true to his promise. Oh, have mercy. Oh, have mercy. My brothers and my sisters, as I get ready to close this lesson, I want you to hear. God, God tells us things and tells prophets things, and we, we, we have to tell you. And so I encourage you to listen and heed the warnings and repent. And turn from your wicked ways. For those of us who are prophets, we have a job. We, we do not, we cannot, we should not compromise or water down God's word to gain acceptance of others. We need to understand that God's people may be opposed by those who do not welcome his word. And our past credentials and training should not hinder us because who God calls, he also equips. And he'll give us what to say and how to say it. God is truly the source and authority for us to proclaim his word. And unfortunately, there are times when judgment is certain and those who attempt to silence the word of God are going to have to deal with God's judgment. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, grant us the conviction that comes from the study of your word so that we may profess boldly the grace of your son by whose blood the coming judgment may be escaped. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before I close a recording, I always like to give those who are listening now and those who listen to the recording later an opportunity to give your life to Christ so that you can avoid the coming judgment because there is a judgment coming and we pray the prayer of salvation based on Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 and verse 13 let us pray 
Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart. You are now saved. May God bless you. For those who on Facebook want to hold, get with us on the conference call where we'll discuss the word, the conference call number is 910-218-0531. Be blessed. Shout out to the church in, in Kenya, New Harvest in Kenya. May God continue to bless you guys. In Jesus' name we pray and give him praise. Goodbye, Facebook.